Next up, Jim in Peoria, Illinois, listening on Sirius XM 131. Hi, Jim. Hello, Hank. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, Hank, I, I appreciate you taking my call here. I've I, uh, been a long time supporting you, the ministry. I've listened to you for many years and uh, take what you say to heart. Mm. Hank, I, I've been sick for, for quite a while now. I've been diagnosed with lung cancer, and I've been doing treatment now for about three years, and they've about run out of things to do. It's just gotten to the point where it doesn't respond to treatment anymore. So hmm. the doctors just pretty much told me they've done all they could do. So, and uh, but I don't have much time left. But my question is, how can I know I'm not going to go to hell? Oh. I've been a believer for all my life. I know Jesus is who Jesus said he was. I know, and I believe that God is, is the Father. And I just hope that, that that's going to be enough. Because I, I stumble all the time, and especially these past couple of years, I've been, I catch myself in bad states of depression. I get angry, and then I, I come out of it, but I don't want anybody to see me like this. Mm-hmm. I try to be as upbeat and positive as I can, but when I'm by myself, I just, I'm a totally different person. And uh, doctors have told me I've got about four more months. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't want to go to hell. And I want to make sure that belief in Jesus is all I need. Well, I can assure you, Jim, that it is. And I can assure you that not because I'm a voice on the radio, but I can assure you on the basis of the Word of God Himself. You know, it is the Word that says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And then the apostle who wrote this, the beloved apostle John, says, I write these things to you. And you might personalize that, Jim. I write these things to you, Jim, to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have everlasting life. Your everlasting life is not a function of your goodness or your greatness, but of his goodness and his greatness. And he came not for perfect people, Jim. He came for sinners just like you and I. Those in the human condition where sometimes we are without faith, we are faithless. Sometimes we are without hope, we are hopeless. Sometimes we are in despair. And at other times, we're on the mountaintop. But whatever state you are in, if you have believed on the name of the Son of God, you have not only been saved by his death on the cross, but you have been saved into his life. Even if that mortal existence for you is four months as you suppose it will be. It is still significant. My dad, like you, knew he was going to die in 1997. And I was with him in 1997 before he died, and he was struggling with the fibrosing of the lungs, which encroached upon his ability to assimilate oxygen. And I remember just a few year, uh, a few months, I should say, before he died, asking him, Dad, wouldn't you just like to go home to be with the Lord This has to be terrible. You're suffocating to death. And he said, every single moment is precious. And so it was. And that's the same with you. Whether it's four months or five months or six months, every moment is precious. And what I would do at this point is to get a hold of the Word of God and meditate upon the words of the 139th Psalm. 
those words can give you strength because God knows exactly where you are. He has searched you and he knows you and despite seeing you, completely loves you. He knows when you sit and when you rise. He perceives your thoughts from afar. He discerns your going out and your lying down. And then the text says, He is familiar with all your ways. And even before a word is on your tongue, some of the words you were just communicating, even before that word is on your tongue, the Lord knew it completely. And yet he hems you in, Jim, behind and before and has laid his hand upon you. And that's knowledge that is wonderful. It's actually, as the text tells us, too lofty to attain. But Jim, there's nowhere that you can go from his spirit. There's nowhere that you can flee from his presence. Because if you go up the heavens... He is there. And if you go to the depths, he is there. If you rise on the wings of the dawn, if you settle on the far side of the sea, even there God's hand will guide you and his right hand will hold you fast. And later on in this same psalm, the psalmist says that my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me. And you can say that personally, Jim, all the days ordained for me, Jim, were written in your book before one of them came to be. So the Lord knows your condition He knows your heart. He knows the random thoughts that go through your mind. And Jim, he loves you. He will never turn away one like you that wants a relationship with him. And he doesn't keep you in his care because of your perfection, but because of his perfection. And so what I would do is I would Focus on the facts. And you can remember them simply as this. The F is faith. Your faith is not in your own faith. It is in God, and therefore it is faithful. The A, adoration. You can adore God even now more dearly as you know that you are going to be in his presence, not just through prayer, but in his presence for all eternity. So adoration, and a psalm for adoration is Psalm 145. I would make that part of the warp and woof of who you are. And then confess your sins. Come to the Lord just as you have now confessed them on the air. Confess them to the Lord. If you confess your sins, he is just and able. He will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then give him thanks. Thank him in all circumstances, even in the pain of radiation. And then lay out your request before the Lord. So as you settle your affairs, you have peace in the midst of the storm. Remember that what ultimately is the hope for you and I is not a peaceful life. Not the removal of difficulties. What it is, is peace in the midst of the storm and the hope of resurrection. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would give Jim that very peace. Oh Lord, may he look forward to a body that is immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. And may he say with Job, Though I die, yet will I stand again on the earth in a restored universe, in a resurrected body. Lord Jesus Christ, give Jim peace in the midst of this storm. And may he know that you are his and he is yours. Not just know, but know.